First of all, when Rafi Marmor, the producer, called me and said he wants to do a documentary, I said, no, thank you. I had just done something for the BBC in England. I said, enough already. I don't have time. That's what I really said. And then he kept on talking a little, and he told me that he did a movie called, um, called No Place on Earth. And that sentence, of course, resonated with me because that's my background. I said, let me see that movie. I saw the movie. It's about a group of Jews in Ukraine that uh, survived uh, by the local population feeding them for over a year underground. And then he sa I said, OK, come to New York. We'll talk. Then he said he wants to work with Ryan White. I said, get me his films. Ryan owes me seven and a half hours of my life <laughs> because I watched the whole series of his films on uh, Netflix. And uh, like a cliffhanger, I couldn't stop watching because every time <laughs> one finished, I had to watch the next about the uh, nun, the beautiful nun who was killed in uh, Baltimore. So I said, get to New York, we'll talk. And then once I decided, after I've seen all of his other films, uh, I, then, I, uh, then I knew that I'm going to work hard. But Ryan worked even harder than me. Uh, his crew, David, the photographer, was fantastic. And uh, we took Ryan to Israel and uh, it was interesting because Ryan is not Jewish, and it gave a different perspective to my uh, story. But we went to Israel, and I made him um, jump in the Kinneret naked, where Jesus <laughs> came down. I wasn't there. I didn't see it. <laughs> she made me bring my wet underwear back to her. I I got that I had been in the, the Sea of Galilee, right? Not only the Sea of Galilee, but I had, um, he had to prove that he really uh, did go at the steps of, of uh, uh, Jesus. So um, it was a very interesting, it was very hard work. They worked very hard, and I worked hard too. And it was interesting uh, to get a different perspective of uh, somebody who has done so many documentaries. Before. There's also a real palpable warmth and chemistry, I think, watching the film that it seems like you developed as a team when you were working together but, on this. But I love him much better now without the camera because <laughs> I was so careful of every word that I was saying <laughs> because that guy had constantly, not only the photographer, David, but you also have a camera. And um, so I was very happy after my uh, birthday party to go uh, to talk to him alone without a camera. One of the things that you are very clear on in the film is that you don't like to talk about politics, or you felt that it was not appropriate to talk about politics given that the work that you do otherwise. Okay. But my understanding is that that's changed recently, and you do feel okay. like now you So want these, uh, uh, since some things change in life, even for a 91-year-old. I have always said I don't talk about politics. Somebody who talks about sex from morning till night has to stay away from politics. These days, I have changed my mind. I'm very upset when I see children being separated from their parents, because that's my story. And I'm very upset about the issue of that we have to worry again about uh, legalized abortion and about funding for uh, family planning. So I have changed my mind. <laughs> and I certainly know, look at this wonderful audience here and the applause again <laughs> uh, that you are with me. I like that. <laughs> 